you watch the previous two Every State Independent Battle Royale videos, you'll know that the island nations don't do well at all. It's actually really sad. So these states pretty much have no chance out this way, but that's gonna change here. I finally allowed them to do some naval invasions. I figured that out. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. Which yes, that means that New Zealand and Australia will be somewhat significant. And that's not even like a big deal for just the Every State Independent mod. I mean, that's just a big deal for Hoi Foy in general because these places don't do all that much. I do want to mention that an island nation won't necessarily win here. It's just more possible. They're going to do better than ever before. This is still pretty much anyone's game. As always, we're going until there's only one left. It's going to be an epic battle royale, just as usual. Let's just go ahead and place our bets now. You probably noticed that coastal states had a pretty big advantage in the past because, you know, they were kind of walled off. But now that there's going to be some naval invasions, I don't know who's going to do the best. Maybe now the more landlocked nations. The US have declared their first wars, and as I've said in the past, you know, with all these countries, this can play out thousands of different ways. I mean, the previous two videos were pretty different. I mean, if your state hasn't won in the past, maybe this is it. I think the big focus will be on the British Isles though, since like whoever unifies this region is gonna have a very easy time going after European mainland. They're just in a good position to take a bunch of stuff over. There really are like a thousand different states on this map. So even just predicting like who wins a continent or even a subregion like the Middle East or India, that's pretty good because I mean, literally none of my predictions have come true. Also, for those of you that are just watching the Hoi 4 videos, you might not know that I'm now a historian. I'm an official Polish historian, kind of. Uh, I did research and I learned for the first time ever, I amazed myself and I know I, I shocked the shit out of a lot of you guys. So you probably didn't know I was capable of any sort of learning. Let me know what you think of that video and I would love to get an opinion of what place I should do next. I'm trying to get like a general idea of what nation I should do some research on. Puerto Rico is the first place to actually kill somebody. So, Fantastic. I think that normally happens, but maybe this is also a good sign for our island states. It's only been one month, but obviously the places that grabbed some extra territory so far are in a much better spot than everyone else. They have extra factories, manpower, resources. It's a good sign they might be around for a while. Asia is obviously a huge cluster, just as you'd expect, but for the places that do come out over here, I mean, they're likely to win. It seems like at least that way from previous experiences. I think Louisiana might be the first place to get something in North America. They took out Mississippi, and now they're at war with Arkansas. Cornwall and Lancaster, as we've seen in the past, they're the first ones to do well in like British territory. That could change depending on what happens in Scotland and Ireland though. Danzig off to a quick start. Germany, I'm sure would love to get that back, especially if Danzig controls the entire world. That'd be a nice like cast a spell eye for Hitler. I'm gonna try to keep my eye on ideologies a little bit later when there's only a couple places still left. Obviously, you know, communism, fascism, democracy, that doesn't really make much of a difference, but it's still cool to look at. Iowa taking out Missouri. That's always impressive. These states in the middle of America, they, I mean, they, they struggle because they have to worry about all different sides. Still, I mean, maybe this is your guys' time. Come on, Holland. I believe in you. I feel like they always get off to a pretty quick start, but they struggle at the end. I mean, it's helpful. They have this nice coastline, just watch out for the French and German states. And it looks like North Korea is not gonna have a repeat in Asia. They did well in one video, but that's not gonna happen today. For some reason, the Italians don't do as well as you'd expect, especially like down here towards like the boots of the peninsula. You know, they're really protected. I don't know why. I mean, they don't really have that much success. Maybe they just haven't upgraded their Roman legions to infantry yet. Out of nowhere, the London area has taken all of Southern England and Wales. And actually Brittany, holy shit. Okay, how did how did they do that? It's Brittany, bitch. Oh, and these guys took some Norwegian territory. Okay, that is new. That is really unexpected. Japan over here, not necessarily doing something similar. I mean, they might not be as focused on that. Uh, they're still battling with their samurais, right? And so far, the biggest mess in North America happens to be from Northwest Canada. Like, they're really getting it on over here. I mean, they're making it look like no one else is really trying. Actually, you know, border gore is just becoming a common theme throughout the map. Germany's looking really bad. And speaking of the damn Dutch, come on, guys, please clean this up. We don't talk about South America too often, but technically, shouldn't they be doing, like, the best out of everyone? There's simply just not that many states on this continent. So whoever unifies this region is pretty much safe. Because on the other hand, Africa, Europe, Asia, and everywhere even close to this, I mean, they're always in danger. 
Until you take over the entire Eastern Hemisphere, you should pretty much always be worried. Florida, Louisiana, Kansas, Colorado, and the Mormons seem to be doing the best here. I mean, Utah actually has three states, and so does Louisiana. Things are getting real. Things are getting really real, especially in this region, because uh, London pretty much is safe, and they grabbed this part of Denmark and Brittany. They're going a little crazy. Northern Ireland's doing the same thing. They have brought together the Irish, and now they're down here fighting in Spain. They're taking on Aragon. Oh my god, I love this. I don't know if necessarily they're doing the best, but this Libyan desert state, uh, they have the biggest font size, and that's all that matters, right? It's not the motion of the ocean, it's its size. I don't know, that's what I'm told. My state, California, finally doing something. Okay, please don't embarrass me like you've done pretty much in every single video ever. And in terms of South America, Ecuador, kind of coming out of nowhere. And they're walled off, so they might do well. Oh, wow, Tuscany, okay. Uh, clearly, you've got some EU4 rubbing off over here in this video. So they already have the entire peninsula. That could be a good sign. While the Irish are collecting Mediterranean islands like fucking Infinity Stones, and they're still attacking other Spanish states, safe to say they are easily, I think, ahead in terms of the rest of the world. Central Europe is also getting pretty intense. I mean, it is uh, a massive mess as expected, but I mean, there's not too much left. One of these places is gonna have all this territory soon. The South Island has eaten up New Zealand, and then New South Wales taking on Western Australia and the Northern Territory. I, I'm just really hoping we see some action here. That's all I really want. El Salvador, once again in Mexico. Man, I don't know what's up with them, but we've seen them do really well just from this super small start. You gotta love it. Looks like there's only maybe over a dozen states left. That was fast. And Texas might still be around, but they ain't doing so well. Ouch, yeah, I know that they're a big pick, but they ain't repeating here. Trying to figure out who's scarier at the moment, uh, Northern Ireland or London. I, I think I'm leaning towards London, just because they grabbed this territory so quickly. Oh shit, but do not underestimate this place. They're doing really well, uh, and they're like in the thick of it too. They just, they battling it out here. This part of Africa always, I feel like, has a nice advantage just because, I mean, you know, they're safe and there isn't necessarily anyone over here that can navally invade them. Okay, yeah, Ecuador is probably a safe bet to win South America. It's still really early to be saying all that, but I mean, they're taking out, I think, their biggest rival, so it's looking good. There we go, Japan. They're finally doing something. All right, this is uh, this is exciting. And they got a hold of those uh, Korean slaves that they always love to get, so this is accurate. Five or six states are really starting to pull ahead in Europe. You could probably make a couple guesses now and uh, feel pretty safe being right. That's a new one. That is definitely a new one. Uh, Northwestern Siberia, uh, you know, they normally do well because the Arctic keeps them safe. Never seen them do this though. They ate Alaska. Okay, what the hell does that mean? And luckily for them, this area is still just really, really messy. So they might not really be paying much attention. This could be a great jumping off point for Asia to come after North America. Louisiana was the first place to actually take something. So this shouldn't be surprising, but for some reason it still is. I mean, they're doing the best for sure in, in the US, but uh, they're still kind of smushed in here. They could get gang banged. It's about damn time Madagascar finally does something. Oh, I'm, I'm loving this. I mean, if you think about it, this state should just always do amazing. They got, they got those penguins, and I believe they also have the bubonic plague still, right? Uh, maybe they're doing some chemical warfare or some shit. Northern Ireland has now made it down into Morocco. That is fantastic. Uh, surprisingly, they're not going after London just yet. They're both uh, avoiding war, so I mean, they must be of similar strength. Or there's just obviously like weaker enemies nearby. Actually, Britain is focused on Scandinavia. I've noticed that. They're slowly just climbing up this way, which is smart. I mean, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think these places are all that powerful. Again, I don't know who these guys are, but they're doing amazing. Uh, I believe they're uh, a place from Iran, something like that. Uh, Seem Nan, Seem Nan, okay, that sounds a little like something else, but all right. Maybe island nations are a little bit too buff. I think we can confirm that now. New South Wales is taking over all of Southeast Asia. Oh my God. Japan is kind of doing something similar over here. It's not, you know, super shocking just cause I mean, this is like what they historically do. I don't really understand why this portion of the continent can't seem to get it together. It's just still a massive battleground. But I mean, California, Utah, Louisiana, Iowa, Florida. I mean, damn, 
We're gonna see a winner here soon. So, can confirm, islands were the place to be in this campaign. Cuba, Cuba taking all of Central America, and now they might be a pretty big rival to Ecuador. Uh, yeah, this continent might not be locked down as I once thought. I love how even in this universe, Africa can't just keep the damn Europeans out. Of course, someone's gotta come down here and take their shit. Istanbul might do pretty all right. Uh, again, just because they've got so much coastline. Although, I mean, who knows? They could be another Tuscany. Tuscany hasn't really moved for a long time. New England, finally. We've never seen the state do literally anything. And it's weird because they don't necessarily start in that tough of a spot, but uh, whatever. Uh, keep in mind, this state actually has multiple states at the start. Uh, you know, the borders aren't necessarily realistic. This is the only place that uh, is like that. Doesn't matter, either way, they're doing well. And uh, they actually are looking super good since they're walled off in the north. Aden, Aden, something like that, I don't know. Since they have the uh, Arabian Peninsula, they are also looking pretty safe. Just depends on what direction they decide to go in. Here's the world map at the moment. And as you can see, things are just super heated everywhere. I mean, we're down to only a couple players left in some of these continents, South America, Africa. There's still a lot of work left to be done in kind of the other places. New South Wales though, they took over everything. This is probably the most incredible thing we've ever seen out of this location. I, I don't think, yeah, this has never happened, definitely. Japan's doing something kind of weird at the moment, but I mean, they're doing amazing. They're taking out a lot inland, and these Chinese states are usually just fighting amongst each other, so. I guess it was pretty easy for the AI just to take everything. By the way, some of these major players like London and Northern Ireland, both non-aligned. And there's actually a, a lot of that. I've been checking on some of the ideologies, yet yeah, nothing too crazy yet. But it looks like at least we do have some realism though. I always love when these mods end up being just way more realistic than expected. We're down to the last two here. Unfortunately, I don't think this state has much of a chance. Ecuador is too powerful, unless Cuba somehow gets involved. But the Cubans, of course, are busy trying to invade Florida. Again, with the realism. Oh, wow. Okay, didn't even realize this. Uh, Iowa. <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe that. That is actually kind of incredible that they've done this. Um, they still have a long way to go because, yeah, if they're fighting New England, that is gonna be a tough battle. Still no war between the Irish and London just yet. That's kind of shocking. I mean, they're running out of options pretty soon, especially because, yeah, these states are looking pretty powerful. It is up to Madagascar or Ghana, I believe, to maybe kick out other sort of foreign invaders. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. The Australians and Japanese are finally touching tips and it's actually a pretty big tip for instance. I don't know if they're gonna go to war because again, there's still some powers they should take out maybe before then. I think so. Istanbul ended up doing well, but uh, as you can see, there's just no way they can make it out of this. They have probably too many. Yeah, there, there's gonna be too many neighbors that they're gonna wanna eat them up. Ouch. Okay, well that is definitely a first. New England has taken over Canada and the US. They still have to fight off Cuba. It doesn't seem to be that difficult. Although, although Cuba has New Mexico and uh, oh man, New Mexico, so powerful. Ecuador unsurprisingly becomes the second place to unify their continent just behind New South Wales. No big shocker here. Actually, they're gonna help out a lot in the war against Cuba. Didn't think about that. What in the, he how did Holland do all this? They were flying really, really just under the radar for this entire time. Still, it is gonna be tough they're attacking Istanbul, but um, pretty sure a war with London is coming up. This is probably the most terrifying though. Obviously, as I said, whoever controls all of Asia tends to be at least in the top two. Yeah, at least in the top two. And there's really only like four players left. So normally I zoom out and look at the map when everyone has control over their starting continent. So that leaves us with nice, you know, clean borders, six or seven nations left. That is not the case today because this game has been so damn weird. I mean, I guess there are three island nations that are four, I'm sorry, four island nations that are still around. So things are looking pretty funky. It's safe to say New England is probably gonna take over all of the West very soon. I'm sure it helped that Cuba had a lot of strength and now, yeah, Ecuador's kind of screwed. I just realized Madagascar died. Man, that that is unfortunate. There was a part of me that actually really wanted them to win. That would be incredibly unique. And honestly, who, who the hell picks Madagascar? Finally, the great war between the Irish and the Brits of London, it's, it's gonna go down. It's about damn time. We've waited for this for a while. 
It looks like one side might be a little bit stronger than the other though. Here's the final three, and I guess they really wanted to make us wait to the last second. I can't believe these two started so close together, and uh, it took all this time before they're actually doing battle. Uh, New England's just gonna sit here and chill, I think. Actually, they might go after London because they actually control Alaska right now. And there you go. Even with all of Africa making potatoes to fuel the Irish Empire, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And yeah, with London taking over this region, they won the game, unsurprisingly. I think it's safe to say that these island nations had the greatest every state independent video ever. I, I really like that. I might even need to tone it down because they did so damn well. I'm just really glad this part of the world finally was able to have an impact. I mean, it sucks when we just have to watch as they unify this continent and then they do nothing else. It was really nice that, you know, they actually played a pretty big role up until the end. So did Japan. That's really new. If you have any other ideas of what I could buff next for the Every State Independent mod, I mean, we could do certain regions, certain uh, geographical locations. I mean, I, I will definitely buff island places no matter what now. I might tone it down though. I think I need to kind of tone it down because they did really, really well. I don't know. I guess I'll see what you guys think. Thanks for watching. See you next time. A big thanks to Free Cruz, LBC, Destiny, F 9000, Paint Me Like You Do Your Sheila's, and Papa Stalin of the Paintbrushes, Danko Franco, Mega Fat Boy, Elijah Senpai, Rooster Jen's Gen Love, Love Disc, Swiss Argo, Maxi G, King Solomon, Abraxas, Galley, Tanner of the Nazareth, Hatman, Cooter Donkey, Mr. Diddlesman, Brandon H, Beard Dunn 97, The Lord of Silence, Ben Whitson, Alan Kari, Jared Clarks, and Ben Moak.